In January 2012, the ship National Geographic Explorer was chartered to a very special destination. On board the ship were leaders in science, arts, business, public policy and culture, brought on this extraordinary voyage to an isolated continent at the farthest reaches of the Earth, so that they may experience the drastic effects of climate change firsthand. Well, it's been 22 years since I was first here, and there are a lot of changes that have been underway. Of course, the scientists uh, making this trip with us have been describing them in some detail. This continent has 90% of all the ice in the world. In many parts of Antarctica, the ice is three miles thick. This area of Antarctica is warming up four or five times faster than the rest of the world. Uh, the wintertime temperatures have gone up here 12 degrees Fahrenheit. That's an, an enormous increase. So the ice is melting much more rapidly. The science I do is studying the ice sheets in particular. And what we're finding is that they are shrinking, uh, generally, and at increasing rates. Just in the last five or 10 years, we've been astonished at the rate at which changes have been directly measured. That loss of ice on the ice sheet goes directly into the ocean and raises sea level around the world. Seeing all the calving that has been going on with the glaciers losing a great deal of ice mass really illustrates vividly what the world has at stake. We were in one area where you could see the, 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 the ice had retreated uh, miles uh, just in the last uh, couple of decades. And that's happening in many places uh, around this continent. It's happening on Greenland. It's happening in the Himalayas. It's happening in the Rockies, in the Andes, in the Alps. Everywhere there's ice, the frozen parts of this planet are melting and thawing. The ice sheets are moving faster toward the sea. Uh, and this system has a lot of momentum. Once it gets uh, started, uh, it, it's, it's hard to reverse it. So it has the potential for raising sea level catastrophically. Humans have become the dominant climate forcing. We're driving the climate now. The warming that we've seen in the last 30 years is clearly due to human-made greenhouse gases. So we're running out of time. We need to stabilize climate before the ice sheets become unstable. The ice sheet that is of most concern is the West Antarctic ice sheet, which rests on bedrock below sea level. And once that starts to disintegrate, then it will be too late to stop it. Sea level already has, has uh, increased the rate at which it's rising. It's now rising at more than three centimeters a decade, which, you know, in one century is about so much. But that rate is twice as large as it was a quarter of a century ago. And we can see that the ice sheets are losing mass faster and faster. Even a one meter sea level rise would be disastrous because we have so many cities located on coastlines around the world. We've no, never had changes like this. So we've got to stop treating the atmosphere as if it's an open sewer. And we've got to, to, to realize the consequences of continuing this. We really have to see it, understand it, and then act to solve it. We hope to make more people aware of exactly what is at stake, make more people aware 
of the fact that the solutions are available, that we should be doing these things anyway, that we're going to get through this and on the other side of it, we can have a better world, more sustainable. It's a global problem and the solutions have to be global in nature. So it's a, it's a hard one, but it's essential that we do it.